the entrance and the blind. All people clap their hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. Good morning. Special intention of today's Mass is for Arthur Brewster. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Let's prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by pausing to call to mind our sins and asking God for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of, of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, the king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel, the country, and cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and the royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say, Prophesy not against Israel. Preach not against the house of Isaac. Now thus says the Lord, Your wife shall be made a harlot in the city and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land will be divided by measuring line, and you yourselves shall, shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled far from his land. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The judgment of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure and enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true.
God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? But then you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. It's quite a sight to look out and see so many masks and welders' helmets, I'm telling you. It's something. You know, I'm a, I love to, when I pray with scripture and there's a story, I love to be able to imagine what it was like and if possible, place myself in the scene. And it's very easy to do, I think, for this particular gospel. It's easy to think about a group of friends wanting to help another friend, someone who was paralyzed and unable to walk or move at all. I can just imagine, I, in my imagination, I see four people, each grabbing one end of the pole of a stretcher and carrying their friend to Jesus. And the four of them, it's not, not easy. Uh, I've, I've been a pallbearer before and helped to carry a casket with six people and it's quite heavy. So it's quite heavy to carry a, a presumably a man, four people, each pole of the stretcher carrying this man for goodness knows how long and how far to get to Jesus. Those were some great friends and they thought they had the perfect healing in mind, a healing of this man's paralysis. That's what they were hoping for. Let him get well physically and his life will be changed. So what does Jesus do? Well, the four men arrive with the stretcher and they place the paralyzed man on the ground in front of Jesus. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus had a big smile on his face when he said that, because that was, in his mind, the greatest gift and healing that he could give, to forgive the man's sins. The only problem was, that's not why they brought the man. They wanted him to be able to walk. So meanwhile, the scribes get very offended and angry because they're thinking, well, who the heck is this guy proclaiming that this man's sins are forgiven? What a blasphemer he is. How he is uh, disrespectful to God. But Jesus is aware of all that's happening. And so he says, well, what do you think it's easier to do? To say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? Now, the answer to the question in Jesus' mind is that it's easier for me to give a command to heal, to let this man stand up and walk, than to forgive his sins. That's the greater gift. That's the greater healing. But Jesus says, but that you may know and understand that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. He looks at the paralyzed man and he says, get up off your stretcher, rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. And the man rose and went home to the awe of the crowd. They were couldn't believe that this could happen. And still it's not clear that they understood that Jesus had given this man the greater gift of healing his sins. Because you can get into heaven if you have a broken hip or you have a broken leg. You can't get into heaven if you've got the stain of sin on your soul. And so that's the greater gift because that's the one 
that clears us and prepares us for eternal union and communion with God. And of course, how blessed are we that when Jesus came back from the dead, when he rose, one of the very first gifts he gave to the church, to the apostles was, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. He gave the, the church through the apostles the ability to free us from the slavery and the paralysis of sin. That's the greater gift. So we can still ask God to be healed when we have a broken hip or a broken arm or we've gotten a diagnosis of cancer or we're trying to stay clean of coronavirus. That's okay. God will sometimes answer that, but only as a sign of the greater healing that God wants to give, the spiritual healing, the freedom from the paralysis and slavery of sin. So let's ask God to help, help uh, ourselves think in those terms. The greatest gift God wants for me today is to be free of sin. And if I'm stuck in the middle of sin, then the greatest gift that I can get is to have my sins forgiven and to be reconciled with Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. That the Lord may keep the watch over his church, growing her in holiness and virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ may heal divisions and bring an end to violence throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the compassion and mercy of Christ May free all who suffer from any physical or spiritual burden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Lorraine McClare, who uh, will be buried today, for her eternal rest and the consolation of her sister Shirley, Brandon, and their family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Guide researchers to develop a vaccine. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, and sorrow. Grant us your peace. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord, our Lady of Prom Sagor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie. Pray for us. Amen. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Prom Sagor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with bearing our mother and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord, our Lady of Prop Succor, hasten to help us. 
Mother Henrietta Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord of my soul, and all within me is holy name.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, our parish office will be closed tomorrow, Friday, July 3rd, uh, in celebration of the 4th of July holiday. The Adoration Chapel closes at 6 p.m. today and reopens on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, we're trying to move to perpetual adoration 24 hours a day. Uh, to resume that, we have 168 hours a week, 150 hours are signed up for, so we only have 18 hours left. If you would like to hear what those hours are and possibly take one of them, please contact Dottie Watson, who coordinates the chapel for us. Her uh, email address and phone number are on the front page of the bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. Thank you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.